She's ruined her life. She's killed my mom. And it just started a ripple effect that will go on forever. At just after 3.30 in the morning, my phone rang. As I was picking up the phone, I heard my older sister on the other end talking. I didn't hear the words that she was saying. She was talking to somebody, uh, but I just picked up the phone and said, Mom's dead, isn't she? And um, she said, yes. We knew there was another car involved. That was my first question. Was anybody else hurt? Was anybody else involved? Or was it just Mom? As the day went on, um, I started getting phone calls from friends um, who had seen on the news um, and started hearing details of it being a drunk driving crash. I um, wasn't angry. I wasn't, um, I didn't hate the girl. I didn't have any of those kinds of feelings. I didn't feel sorry for the girl, but I just thought, you know, she's made such a stupid choice. Like this is such a stupid thing that she could have done. My mom was estimated at going the speed limit of 50 to 55. And the girl I've heard estimates between 80 and 100 miles an hour is what they estimated her to be going. It nearly cut her body in two and her neck was snapped and she died as fast as a person can die. And so for that, I'm thankful. One of the things that my oldest daughter um, wrote in her letter to the judge, she heard me get the phone call. She heard the phone call the night that night. I didn't know that until I read her letter. Uh, she heard the phone call and um, she's, she didn't know what to do. But the things she talked about missing and the things that will impact her are she was looking forward to uh, my mom doing her hair for her prom and her wedding and um, so this past uh, winter, or just a couple of months ago, when my daughter had her first formal, it's all of that. Coming back and just going to get my daughter's hair done was a sad event when it shouldn't have been. About a year later, one of my mom's friends sent me a letter along with this piece of paper. It's my mom's handwriting, which I love my mom's handwriting, I always have. Uh, one thing I could not live without is faith in God. Two things I'd like to be remembered for are kindness toward others and a loving mom who tried her best. And then the next thing it says, uh, there, if there were just two rules for everyone to follow, and she only put one, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The quality that will help me the most in life is forgiveness. At sentencing, it felt like we were at this girl's funeral, and there she is standing in front of us. The judge asked her that day um, if she thought she was going home, because there was something she, I don't know, he asked her something, and I guess the way she answered it made him think that, like, she maybe doesn't get the seriousness of this day. He said, did you think you were going home today? And she said, yes. He said, you're not going home today or at least not to the home you knew. I'm sending you to prison for 25 years. And I thought I was gonna throw up. And I'm not the one that was getting ready to be handcuffed. So I have no idea what it felt like for her. I don't have any idea what it felt like for her family. It almost felt heavier than my mom's funeral because, because she's gotta live through that. And at least my mom's gone and she's in heaven and she's in a good place. But I don't know, it was it, indescribable. I speak at Victims Impact Panel, and I enjoy doing that because um, I can share my mom's story, but I can also share with all of those people the outcome of what happens. You know, once the news media is gone and you don't see the, you know, crash scene anymore, or what happened to um, the drunk driver or the victim's family or the victim, there is now a girl who made a bad choice at 20 years old, and at 22 years old, she was sentenced to 25 years in prison for second degree murder. And she has to serve 85% of that sentence. So in 21.25 years, she will be able to go and ask for her freedom. And she will be 43 years old when she's allowed to do that. 
I was 40 years old the day I was sitting in the courtroom for her sentencing. I can't imagine, I can't imagine that. 